Allison, our keynote speaker, and just at the end of the day, it's just going to be a part of the lineup. So we have the director of education at Hootsuite. I don't know if you know what Hootsuite is. You guys should, but it's an awesome platform. It's a man of all your social media. Before that, she was at Microsoft. She got hired by Yammer from a blog post. I think that's just crazy. That's just a blog post landed her a job. So, give me a round of applause. Yeah, um, that story about the blog post literally changed my life. I don't know if any of you were at social media today, but I was on a panel of like failures, and so I talked about my <laughs> failure of a blog post that I wrote, but it was, it was, I was being really open and transparent, and then the CEO of Yammer was like, oh, I like you, come work for me. Um, so actually, what I'd love for us to do before we get started is, um, I'd love for all of us to kind of stand up for a second. It is so early on Saturday, like bless you all. Um, and I'd love for you guys just to stand up, meet someone new, um, and tell them if this is your first time, how many times you've been at Tech Phoenix, and um, then I'd love for you to tweet about it. Because this session right here, we're going to be, like, I don't want you to be staring at me. Um, get your phones out. I hope you're fully charged. Um, are all of you on Twitter? I'm hoping most of you are on Twitter. So good. I, I have really high expectations for you guys. Some of the sessions that I do, I'm like, let's send your first tweet. Um, and, uh, because I have a lot of patience. And I love, love, love people like that. So anyways, let's stand up for a second. Meet someone new. Um, tell them if this is your first.
something. Um, so glad um, to be here. This is my second time at Tech Phoenix. I spoke last year, and it was just a really great time. Um, my name is Allison Michaels, um, and as I was mentioned, I work at Hootsuite, Director of Education Services, and I'm actually the only one from Hootsuite in Arizona, so it's really fun. Hootsuite is actually based out of Canada. Um, love Canada, they are so fun. Um, and we'll be heading up there next week, and I was actually visiting a customer yesterday, and it was 18 degrees, so I was happy to be back. <laughs> oh, please, get me back to the sun. Um, so what we're going to talk a little bit about this morning is a little bit of forward thinking, and I'm definitely going to want your help and your support, and especially live on Twitter, because there's a lot of people kind of just lurking and, and thinking about what Tech Phoenix is all about. So what I'm going to kind of talk about a little bit is some predictions that Hootsuite and my organization has um, for 2015, and I want to hear what you guys are thinking as well of really, really what does 2015 look like from a social, from a tech perspective. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of really dial it down. Um, as, as kind of alluded to, social is really personal for me. Um, it's, it's a very, very personal thing, and I think it should be very personal for you as well. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about that as well. And then um, I've got some fun memes and a couple videos to show you. So if you're not familiar with Hootsuite, but maybe you are familiar with Game of Thrones, um, I've got a short little video that might be fun to keep things off. really well on paper and then they said why don't we make a video of this and it was like a couple of interns and then it exploded into this really big thing and that Game of Thrones piece of content is something that's almost gone viral for Hootsuite and we didn't even think it would but people love Game of Thrones so why wouldn't it go viral so um, I just wanted to take a second and really kind of think about the big picture here from a digital and social perspective I know a lot of you come to this room from a variety of places whether you work for yourself whether you work for a large organization whether you have worked for yourself and now work for a big company or vice versa or now you're just trying to figure out what's your next step um, and how in the world is social and digital going to be doing and, and thinking about this from you know your bigger and what's your next step um, I, um, a couple weeks ago, our CEO, um, Ryan Holmes, he posted, um, he posted a blog post of remember the pre-internet self, um, like what were you like pre-internet? Um, I don't know, anybody have a raise of hands, like remember what that was like? Um, I, I don't want to tell you what that was like for me, but um, yeah, do you remember what that was like? I just remember not being able to look anything up. Yeah, yeah. like you had no phone numbers and like... <laughs> I just remember, you, you, I mean, how did you even find a restaurant without Yelp before? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I remember telling my mom, I was like, yeah, you never go to a restaurant without Yelping it. And she's like, I, I wouldn't? Like, what? Of course not. If it only has 34 reviews, you keep going, you keep looking. But it's, it's really, really interesting how in the consumer space and how we very personally have used social, 
it's also transforming the way that businesses use and connect with their customers in a very, very different way. And it's actually quite interesting because 77% of companies don't think their workforce is ready for this. And this is something that I see every day. This is actually why I have a job and something that I am super passionate about is I get to go and talk about social media literacy. And you guys are probably like, well, duh. Um, but this is a reality. People are, are really kind of thinking, what are these tools? I thought this was just a fad. I don't understand how I can be using it. I remember teaching my mom how to use Twitter, and she was on a Twitter chat um, for first grade <laughs> teachers all around the world on Sunday nights. And she said she learned more in that one hour Twitter chat than she had in the professional development her school has been giving her for the past three, four, or five years. She loved it. She had templates, she had resources, and she made connections all across the world. She was like, this is incredible. But it has to be very, very personal for your organization. And this, to me, this is staggering. I, I just, you know, it's, and the other thing is, it's not a generational thing. Um, this is something that I also have a lot of passionate, passion around is a lot of times companies say, oh, but those millennials, they've got it figured out. Heck, no, they don't. And I've got some uh, examples of that later where you've got people who've grown up with social technologies, but the context is missing. People don't understand how to use it in the context of their jobs and in the context of an organization. I was actually working with a company right up here in Scottsdale, and we kind of did an audit of, of anybody who said that worked at their company on Twitter. Oh boy, it was rated X. Um, we, we said, do you know what your people are actually saying out there? And your brand is all over that. Whether they knew it or not, that's what it was. And I said, is that the way that you want your brand um, you know, portrayed in the, in, in the world? But the thing is, companies are really struggling with how do we do that work-life balance? How do we, we don't want to be like the big brother of saying you, you can and you can't post this and we are going to watch everything you post. But how do you get your employees to actually want to talk about your organization um, and want to share the things that you're up to and want to share the things that they're working on without getting fired, right? Because that's a really big, real, real fear. Um, this is just this stat just blows blows my mind, and I and I and I work with people all the all the time who have these things, these social things, and the, or social technologies. They've got all the profiles, but then they just have no idea what to do with them, or they become robots. Right? Like they've set up all their stuff, and you know that's not them tweeting. Like, um, don't tweet this. You guys will all know how I tweeted. But my boss retweeted himself the other day, and I was like, how did you do that? I was like, tell me your ways. You retweeted yourself. This is awesome. And he was mortified. He's like, help me figure this out. So it's real. Um, it's so real. Um, and even from a leadership perspective, it's, really, it's a lot of fun. Um, Anybody work for a company that kind of still feels a little bit like this? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, to, uh, but actually, this this is a really fun um, fun way to think about things. Um, this this wasn't really that long ago, um, and I also think this is also how we should kind of be operating today. All of the people in an organization can become content creators even from a very, very micro level because of the way that organizations are set up and the way that information flows, people have opinions about the things that their organization is working on. If it's your own consulting organization and you're working with people, or if you work for a large company as well, there's you do have a lot of um, opinions, but you have to know what are the ways and what are the best ways to express yourself. It's funny because um, how I got my job at Yammer via a blog post and a tweet and stuff like that, people were like, I actually um, used to work for First Solar up, up in uh, Tempe, and um, I was working for them in Ohio, and it was so funny because people were like, well, what did First Solar say? And I said, they were not online. So they had no idea that this had happened because nobody was online to even see what their employees are up to so and not that I was saying anything bad or anything I was just being really honest with some stuff that had happened um, no names or anything like that um, I didn't even say where I worked I mean you could probably make it two and two connection but it's very very interesting because there's a lot of people who you know you can talk about things in a way that you're not going to get fired from that I also think too even at the leadership level um, <coughs> executive leaders are really really struggling with how do they connect at that local level. Um, a lot of times I'm working with um, executives and, and they, um, one of the execs 
had, was told never to write anything down on electronic, like he doesn't even own a laptop because legal told him 15 years ago anything he writes down is, you know, <laughs> he, he's on, you know, he's, you know, forget about it. And so, you know, and I'm supposed to get him up on social media, I'm like, how do I do this? So I'm like, well, you could write your tweets out and send it to your admin and maybe she'll tweet it, you know, and I'm like, that's the best I've got. But it's interesting because the executive leaders in the organizations today, they're asked to be open, social, and transparent, and a lot of them did not get to where they are today by being those things. And so this is a real skill, this is a new skill for them, um, and this is something that they are really trying to figure out, and I have seen this over and over and over again. Um, so, as we take a, take a step, um, this is your opportunity to chime in. Um, so what do you think for 2015? What are the trends that are going to happen? Um, let's take a minute, um, think about it. What, uh, what are the big trends? What, what's actually going to happen? Um, I've got a couple that I, I've actually got about four that I'm going to share with what we as Hootsuite think is going to happen, kind of our big bets and our predictions. But I'd love for you to tweet about what do you think is going to happen in 20, 2015, which is not that <coughs> way, like 50 days, which is insane. Yeah. So with all the wearables and the devices that can monitor health, yeah. I imagine we'll see a lot more of that sh being shared on social yeah. networks. Yeah. So then we'll probably also see the backlash of what is your health monitoring on social yeah. networks. Yeah, okay, you better tweet that. I've got okay. sweet swag too for all you tweeters, so make sure that you're tweeting and tagging me so I can give away my swag. Uh, I don't have much of it, um, but I do have some. Yeah, the wearable technology is interesting to me. Um, yeah, just interesting. I've, I've got the really cool running one, and I actually wrote a blog post about this, about how like bad vanity metrics are. I was like, oh yeah, I'm so fast. And my husband's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, what? I made it around the block in this time? And he's like, as long as you've been running, you should be running faster. And so, oh well, I was measuring the wrong thing. So, Real anyway, I know, right? <laughs> like, at least I'm running. At least I'm running. All right, you tweeting, everybody? You're allowed to not look at me. You're allowed to look at yeah. <laughs> I think wallpaper is going to come back. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> is this like design trend? Yeah. Oh, please no. Please. please tell me avocado's coming back. Only if I can do this. Yeah. Avocado and paint. Parcels of the awesome. They, they should come back. MySpace is urgent. Oh, yeah. They're trying. All right, so the first prediction that um, Hootsuite has, and something that obviously I'm very <coughs> personal about, is empowered organizations will win. I see this every day and I see this more and more. Organizations are trying to figure out how they can amplify their messages. And this is something where it's not just um, the marketing team is retweeting stuff, it is where the people on the ground are retweeting and, and posting things, adding their own commentary about the content that people are creating. And you can kind of see the total reach where you've got a lot more full-time employees posting on Facebook, putting it on Twitter, those different things, and then the, the reach is just huge. The also, the interesting part is we're all made up of a variety of networks, so you know your connections just, just really, really make a difference. But the thing I would just, um, it, it's, it's actually really interesting at Hootsuite, we call this hashtag BSU, at Hootsuite we talk in hashtags pretty much the entire day. Um, hashtag BSU, anybody know what BSU stands for? Blow shit up. So when we want something to like go viral to like really get the point, we have a big BSU button that says go. Post this, use this, get this out, get this word out. Um, and then really, really simply, especially for some people, they've got a variety of sample tweets. And this is like super tactical stuff, but this is easy stuff to help people who especially are very unsocial to start to understand how they can be sharing. Um, and engaging with content. The second trend that we see <clears throat> is disruption prevents disruption. Anybody think of an industry that's recently been disrupted? Anybody? 
Taxis. I took Uber for the first time in Phoenix uh, <coughs> Tuesday or Wednesday. That was great. In Chandler, I was like, there's Uber in Chandler. This is awesome. Hotels. Hotel. Yeah, interesting. Payments. Payments. <coughs> what else? What else has been disrupted? Dating. Dating. That's awesome. Somebody tweet that, please. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have so many friends who've met online and who've just met. Um, one of my old former Yammer customers, one of their kind of employees, they met each other on Yammer and then actually get it, got married. You too? We met online. Oh, okay. I was like, you met on Yammer too? <laughs> yeah. I know. They met online. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So this is really interesting because we have organizations who have been around for a really long time getting smoked by companies who are just started doing company or doing their thing you know since 2000 um, and these small organizations are really really disrupting the um, the larger organizations I remember I was in New York City a couple weeks ago and I was having a conversation with my uber driver and he said you can't even drive yellow cabs anymore because he said everybody lives on the apps he goes if you're in New York City and you want a cab you better have an app to call one because good luck you're standing on a corner trying to flag one down no way and he said now, he said, you know, two years ago, the cabs used to go up. They used to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for these cabs, for these cab drivers. He goes, now they've got so many yellow cabs. Nobody wants to drive a yellow cab anymore because Uber is taking over. And, you know, the cab drivers can't really make any money unless they're also on Uber or some of those other sharing technologies. So that, it's really, really interesting. And I think um, if we wait to get disrupted, um, it would be really, really bad. I also think about this very personally, too, in your marriage. I don't know if any of you are married. Disruption prevents disruption. So think about disrupting your marriage in a positive, healthy manner. Maybe take your spouse on a date or something like that. Um, and uh, maybe uh, prevent a bit of uh, disruption as well. This is another one, not as sexy, but um, IT will be your best friend. I think that especially in this day and age, you've got to be super partners with the IT organizations within your companies or as you're figuring out things because they hold the keys a lot of time to compliance, security, things like that. And so in order for some of these empowerment types of things to happen on the ground level, they've got to be involved. But I would say don't let them make all the calls. Um, a lot of times what I've seen, especially when I was working at Microsoft, IT was making all of the calls. Let me tell you, the budgets are shifting in organizations, and they have a lot less dollars than they used to, and obviously money talks. So, um, you know, make sure that you're going and educated. Make sure that IT is really, really going to be your best friend. This last prediction, um, social will become a unifier for brands. This is something that I think, as, as we think about the big, big brands, I'm working with a really big CPG right now, and just the amount of brands that they have and the amount of social presence makes my head spin to think about all the different things. I think on average, a large organization has like 130 plus social profiles. So this is huge, but this is also a huge opportunity for brands to be connecting very, very locally with people who you might use one part of the brand, but you might not use the rest of the brand, for example. So, or you might use one product, but not the other one. Um, uh, you know, I think it's also really interesting to the way that brands have started to create mascots, almost. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just even from the insurance perspective. I don't know if anybody saw that uh, uh, Progressive Insurance dressed up LeBron like Flo for Halloween. Um, and of course, now it's Flo-Bron, and, and they've got their own social presence. I think that's hilarious. Does it make me want to get progressive insurance? I don't know, but it's also really interesting because they've just created this persona and created an opportunity for a brand, I'm sorry, insurance isn't really that sexy, to create, to, to have a very, very interesting, different conversation to connect with their customers. So anyway, so those are kind of the four big things. Um, I think that, the, especially this last one, I think is very, very tricky because organizations are so complex. As you guys all know, this is so, so hard to do to get everybody on the same page. I know working at Microsoft, we had the Xbox team, we had the Skype team, we had the Office team, we had all these different teams. 
and then you were supposed to have like one unified messaging, like <laughs> well, forget about it. You know, that's hard to do. It's hard to get people on the same page <laughs> alone in the same book. So I think that this this is really going to be a challenge for organizations, especially the ones that are not ready to kind of to be having some of those very very local conversations and kind of being where their customers are. <coughs> All right. So what does that kind of look like? Um, I think this is really about, um, this, is, this is kind of why I think things like Tech Phoenix exist. These are people, real people just like you and I, having these great conversations. And we know that you know, they've got their own personal brand, they've got their own things that they're saying. But then sometimes the fails happen. <laughs> Right? Um, so, so example number one, employees taking serious events. They're so proud of where they work. They're so excited, just really excited to share. But people make mistakes. So how do you make sure that even if people make, make some mistakes, um, you know, how do you deal with that? What are the things? And this is a reality. This happens all the time. Um, and this is something where I think um, companies like a Hootsuite or some of the other products can help that. So people have to get approved before they tweet and things like that on behalf of brands. But obviously, people are people and uh, that happens. I don't know if anybody else saw this video. This is a 25 year old. She posted her I Quit video. She has now gone viral uh, and has many of opportunities to kind of, she's like a YouTube Insta star, right? From this video where she had, had quit. And so kind of if you put it in the employer side of the um, you know, situation, man, what a disengaged employee that was so quickly engaged in a very different way. Is, was there an opportunity for that employer to engage that 25-year-old at a different level? So maybe this didn't have to happen in the way. Maybe she could have created another video for them, a user-generated video that could have gone just as viral. So this is kind of where we say is this is kind of the three E's, educate, enable, and empower. This is something why I've just recently joined Hootsuite um, in August. So this is why I'm really, really passionate about what I get to do to talk about why the benefits and also you know those oops those mistakes and what to do with your organization about that and so when i um you know kind of talked about the social media for the unsocial i actually did a similar presentation but a little bit more hands-on a couple of weeks ago and I, as i was saying i was literally teaching people how to tweet for the first time and you know I, I love going back to that because i remember the first day i got on twitter you're like oh my goodness and so this lady tweets and she goes okay who saw that <laughs> Well, <laughs> nobody's following you, and you're not following anyone, so probably no one. So keep trying and go. You know, it's, it's funny because you're just like, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. And she kind of looked at me like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm like, keep tweeting. Tweet what you're learning at the conference and giving them really, really tactical things of why in the world should I be sharing these things? Because that it's, it's just very, very different from that perspective. So, speaking of Twitter, I've got a short video I want to show you. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the infamous um, conference call in real life. Anybody see that video? What? Oh, yeah. What? Oh, my goodness. I'm tweeting that after. We should be watching that. Um, oh, my gosh. It's like crying, laughing funny. But these guys do this video pretty well. Oh. Hey, did you see that tweet I sent yesterday? No, uh, were you retweeting another compliment? Oh. <laughs> yeah, retweeting compliments, same thing as bragging. Good, yeah, it means a lot at the end. What's wrong with that? Well, if we're at a party and I say, nice shirt, would you stand up and say, hey, everybody, this person said I had a nice shirt? No, I wouldn't do that. Same thing. Interesting. Coming from the guy who tweets at least seven times a day about his blog post. I'm accounting for different time zones. Just saying, if you promote something on Twitter more than three or four times, it's probably doing more harm than good. Well, as long as we're dishing out Twitter advice, <laughs> easy on the hashtags. Alright, I've got better things to do with my time than try to decipher where all the spaces go. Well, at least I don't use the word hashtag in real life. <laughs> hey, anybody seen my keys? Hashtag, I'm in a huge hurry. Do me. <laughs> Minus the receding hairline. Alright, you still use lockers with a Z for your photos. Ever heard of Instagram? You 
still tweet like 200 times about that awesome thing that you're doing, which is so awesome that you're having to type a tweet about it instead of actually experiencing it. Okay, speaking of time, enough with the that time tweets, right? That time they got a flat tire. That time that I ran into that famous person. It's a sentence fragment. You're gonna tell me about sentence fragments? Yes. You spell the word because C-U-Z. You tweet about things that people don't care about. What? Name one person who cares you're going to get jeans. Well then how do you think I have so many followers? Huh? Well, because you follow thousands of people in hopes that they'll follow you back. Well at least I'm not having two-way conversations with people. Ever heard of texting? You still think all your followers see your replies. Wait, time out, what? Yeah, you start a tweet with a username, only that person and the people that follow you both see the tweet. Oh. Yeah, that's why people get curious for the username sometimes so that everyone can see it. That's great. And I just found out. Yeah. Time in. You still have your Twitter connected with Foursquare. <laughs> no one cares that you checked in at Applebee's. <laughs> you tweet twice in a row to squeeze more than 140 characters in. Kind of defeats the purpose. You still use Echo Phone. You still use Follow Friday. You never favorite tweet. You only favorite oh, tweet. You tweet too many quotes. You quote too many tweets. <laughs> you guys do realize we just unfollow each other, right? Well, we're friends. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, the funniest videos, the, one of the best videos is the conference call in real life. I swear, anytime I'm on a conference call, I'm like, they are taping me. Oh, so fun. Um, so, uh, so love that video, and I think uh, sometimes as we think about the, the social perspective, we, we could be doing it wrong. Um, oh man, I think my mascara is running. That's so hard, and I've seen that video a hundred times. <laughs> so as we kind of go from the big perspective, and let's dial it back down to a very personal perspective, because I think as, um, as I mentioned before, for me, social is super, super personal. Um, I bought my first house on Facebook, I got my job through a tweet via a blog post, paid for my entire wedding basically via the network that I had and the network that I knew. And I think that's a lot of the way that we conduct business, the, a lot of the way that we have our own friends. And that's just the way that things are. Um, so as you're thinking about this, and as you're thinking about what are your own personal goals for 2015, I want you to kind of step, take a step back and think about who do you know, and then who do you need to know? Especially in a weekend like this, this is a really great opportunity to kind of connect with other people. Um, it's really, really interesting that who do you know, I find out so much more about my friends, and I'm like, man, why aren't we working together in this way? Or you know so many people in this area, I need to know them now too, especially now I'm in a different chapter and I'm in a different thing, as well as I've just recently bought a house and we are doing lots of renovations, so I need to know if you know anybody about anything about renovations, please tell me. That's what I'm learning. Renovations is hard. Um, that's my next blog post, I'm sure. Um, and then who do you need to know? What are those industry experts? Who are those different people? And I think coming here is a really great place to start, especially for some of the speakers who have done it before, who've got the battle scars, who've learned the lessons that you can kind of continue to learn from as well. Um, and then this is my big thing, is what are your passions, what are your interests, and what are your goals? When I talk about social media, I, I really, really encourage people not to become robots on social and not to just automatically schedule things because that's really easy and products like Hootsuite make that really easy for you to do and you can totally do that for some things. But I always say, would you want to get a beer with you? Um, if you look at your social <laughs> stuff, what, what, are, what is that that you're portraying to the rest of the world? Um, something that I heard some time ago, I don't know who told it, but something that I have uh, said uh, quite often is stop trying to be interesting and just be interested. Um, and I don't know who said it, so you can pretend like I said it, but I, I just <laughs> stole it from someone, I'm sure. But for me, um, that is so, so important. And I think when you think about from a social perspective, if you're trying, because social media is very selfish, um, it's all about you, um, and I think sometimes if we can kind of turn that around a little bit and think about what does my community need from me, what can I also offer them, and what can they offer me, I think it is a lot, it's very interesting. Um, 
And this is something I bring up with executives a lot too because they are passionate about other things than just the company that they work for, same as you. And I think that they're trying to say, well, I, I gotta always be talking about the company or something like that, but I'm like, but what's really important is the stuff that's behind the scenes that you feel comfortable sharing as well. So I think that your interests, your passions, your goals, those are also things that make up the social sphere of what you're sharing and things like that. And then kind of how can social media help accomplish these goals? Are you looking for new clients? Are you looking for jobs? Are you looking, what are you looking to do in 2015 as you're thinking about it? And think about how social can help you um, do that, whether it's expanding your network, whether it's going to networking things, whether it's participating in Twitter chats, those are one of my favorite things. I've literally met some of my best friends via Twitter chats, and we still can, still talk to this day. We actually have t-shirts that say that, um, and we still see each other every year at a conference, and they are my mentors, and I will tell you, they are 10, 15, 20 years older than me, and I love learning from them because I met them on Twitter and they have gone through things that I have not yet gone through and they are teaching me how to deal with things that I haven't quite dealt with. And one of them in particular is teaching me how to run a 10K. I'm running a 10K in the Mesa Turkey Trot and I have never run that long before in my life. But he is a, he is a great friend of mine, a great um, thought leader and professional. And he's also a runner and he runs marathons and all this stuff and I'm like, teach me how to run a 10K. It's not his, um, that's not what he does in his line of work, but that's his passion and his interest too. And that's my network helping me run farther and faster. I took a lot of money today. <laughs> so this is what I would really just kind of, for you, as you are consuming so much this weekend, think about your own plan, especially for 2015. Um, I think sometimes our planning for um, New Year's resolutions kind of gets a little bit, you know, you're like, I'm gonna do all of this, and then you look back and you're like, rats, I didn't do but two. Um, but I think, think about your own plan for what you want to do in 2015. One of my really big goals is like a five-year goal. I really want to write a book. People are like, what do you want to write about? I'm like, I don't know. Um, but I really want to write. I'm a really big reader. So I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be really cool if I could write a book? And everybody's writing books these days. I'm sure I could figure it out. So <laughs> I'm having to do this with my own self. I'm thinking about who are the people? What are the plans I need to make? You know, how do I get the word out? How do I get my network on my own side? And then what can I do to learn and adjust and keep relearning from that? So thinking about that in a very personal way for 2015. My, uh, one of my last questions for you is, and this is something, tweetable moment, I want you to tweet this as well as, so why are you here? Why are you here this weekend? What do you want to get out of it? Is it the people, is it the conversations, is it the content? Um, or is it just because you love being surrounded by people who are similar to you? That's why I love coming to these things because I'm like, yes, I'm not the only one who beats out about this. Like, <laughs> yes, this is so cool. Um, but take take 30 seconds, tweet this, and I think I've got one or two more slides left. So take a moment, tweet, right? I want to get trending at 30 in the morning, 9 o'clock in Phoenix. Come on. <laughs> lots, of, lots of Twitter action going on. No, I was not born in 87, I just, I can't understand 87. Everybody always asks me, oh, cool, if I was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Especially when I'm on a webinar, I have to like count to ten before I like speak up again. <laughs> <laughs>
presentation would be what it would be without a budget. Um, just that's all I have to say with that. <laughs> so, something that I tell people is um, to treat social media like a mullet. Um, I mean, come on, why not? Um, and, you know, I think from a, from a smarts perspective, and going back to that being interesting versus being interested, um, you know, I think it's really wise to keep a lot of the conversations as you're thinking about it, business, and of course, feel free to show a little life um, and have a little fun because I think that's so important too because that is stuff that really, really draws in a community that builds the connection um, in the back and searching for mullet pictures, you guys, this was, I was, so this is my prediction, mullets are coming back in 2015, I hope so, I saw one on a plane yesterday and I was like, yes. <laughs> but I was like, I can't decide if this is a real thing or not. Um, so, yeah, so um, I, I think that if you can kind of remember the social mullet, um, I think that will give you a good baseline, that will give you a good framework. Think about the business things, think about the, the, the things that you're learning, and then also don't be afraid to have a little fun um, and to share a little bit of party in the back as well. So with that, Allison Michaels, find me on Twitter. I accept friends and Twitter followers, so, um, and would love to wish you a happy Tech Phoenix.